guys, it's me again. Uh, I was told that you guys are doing lesson 16 and it's about humidi humidity. <laughs> humility. So we're going to read two verses, but we're going to start with one and kind of break that down and work our way through it. So first one is Matthew chapter 18, verse 1 through 4. At the time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child and had them stand among them. Truly I tell you, he said, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child, this one is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so now let's break this down. When the disciples were asking, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? They were really asking, which one of us is the best? Like, who's the best in your eyes? And they were expecting that Jesus would be like, um, you are Matthew, or you're, you are John. Um, but instead, he's like, hey, come here, child. <laughs> come stand right here. And um, you have to humble yourself like this child. And so this was a completely new concept. But he was saying that you need to be like this child because of the humility that the child displays. And when we look at it from that point of view, a child who has loving parents will lovingly want to obey, but also they're dependent on their needs to be met by the parents. They're dependent on getting their food, they're dependent on getting their clothes, their needs met, through their caretaker. And so that's why he says to humble yourself like a child, because likewise, our faith is supposed to be childlike, not in the sense that we're immature, but in the sense that we desperately need Jesus, that we literally cannot live without him. We need him to meet our needs. We need him to comfort us and we need him to take care of us. This important distinction in this society is that that is frowned upon. People look at anybody that just seems like they're not self-sufficient and they just go, <laughs> like they can't do it on themselves. They can't make themselves happy. They can't comfort themselves. They can't get themselves what they need. But that's what Jesus calls us to do, to be like a child. And we're gonna read further in Philippians chapter two, verse three through nine. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility consider others as more important than yourselves. Everyone should look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Adopt the same attitude as that of Christ Jesus, who existing in the form of God, did not consider equality with God as something to be exploited. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a servant, taking on the likeness of humanity, and when he had come as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to the death on a cross. For this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name. Okay, so I kind of want to share the context and for some of you guys, this might be repeat, but when he was talking about selfish ambition and conceit, this was important to distinguish because in the church, there were so many selfish people. They would preach the word of God out of a desire to become more popular than the other person that were preaching. Uh, Paul, who's like in prison preaching and he's becoming more popular. So they're like, this can't happen. So they were being very selfish and they were trying to lift up their own status, which is conceit. This is not a new concept today. This is why it's important as believers of Christ that you need to stand out that you need to be the one influencing the world rather than being influenced. And this is one of the key things that the Bible talks about. Humble people are the greatest. And you won't see this in society, okay? You'll see this in God's word. And our number one example for seeing the display of a humble person or humility is through the example of Jesus Christ. Now, the life that Jesus Christ lived, that's why we study and read the Bible, because he displayed a life of humility that we can learn and be like, okay, this is how Jesus did it, this is how I should do it. Just to give you guys a definition of what humility is, humility is counting others as not only equally important in God's eyes, but counting them more significant. In other words, the opposite understanding is 
you only thinking about yourself, you thinking you're the most important person. I want you guys to think about the school that you guys were in before this all happened, or if you're homeschooled, think about a public school and how there are so many different cliques. There's so many different groups. And in your eyes, you categorize those groups. Like, okay, these people are right here, those people are kind of below here, those people are below those people and all that. Like, you do that in your head. Likewise, we can do that with our own lives. I'm a better Christian than this person. I'm better than this person. This person's below me. Oh, this person's above me or, or whatever it is. The important thing as believers is that we view others as more important. The big question is, well, how can I do this? How can I be humble? How can I care for other people more than I care for myself? Do I force myself? And the answer is no. There's only one way to look at it. And I've, I've said it before, but Jesus is our example. But I'm gonna go a step further and say, the only way to get to that point is to make sure that you have a relationship with Jesus. If your heart is not in the right place, you're, there's gonna be a point where you start thinking you're better than other people. And this is so dangerous because as a Christian, if you think you're better than other people, the devil uses that so that you don't reach out to people. You don't care for other people. You only think about yourselves and that's so dangerous. That's why it's important for you guys as you're in your own homes right now, that you need to realize that when you received the gift from Jesus, you did nothing to deserve it. If you realize and truly understand that you did nothing, nothing at all to deserve the grace, the mercy of Jesus Christ, then you know that's the same for everybody else. And you have to get to that point of understanding because you can't force yourself, you can't put on a fake mask on what it looks like to be a humble person. I'm gonna end it right there because I really do want you guys to meet with your Sunday school teachers or I think John has something really special today where we're gonna to try to meet as a youth group and talk about these things. Um, but I really want you to think about this in your head. Do you feel like you have that humility in your heart? In order for us to love other Christians and other people as Jesus did, we first need to let that speak to us and let Jesus work in us. Because if that if we don't work with that first, then we can't do that. We can't we can't pour out an empty cup. We need God's love first to pour out to others. And um that's where I'm gonna end it. Um, I know I'm wearing it. I'm wearing the same shirt as I was wearing three weeks ago. Um, I promise you I wasn't wearing the same clothes for three weeks, but <laughs> all right guys, bye.